Hey guys, Ernie here and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. After all my overnight videos, I like to do what's called the after the hike. Well, this time I did a bushcraft overnighter, so we're gonna call it after the camp. In these videos, I try to break down the experience, the things that I did right, the things that I did wrong, how the gear that I took out worked, and how I think it performed. So stay tuned and we're gonna talk about all the things I learned from my latest bushcraft overnighter. Thanks for watching. So first let's talk about the details of the camp itself, the location. This was behind my house about half a mile into the woods. Like I said, there's a piece of property back behind me that a gentleman owns that he allows me to go back there and shoot some videos. It's a very low lying area. There are no pine trees whatsoever. Length really wasn't an issue. I probably hiked about a mile total out and back, so that's no big deal. And the gear I would consider to be fairly minimal. You can watch the video and decide for yourself. In case you're wondering, this is the beautiful little Missouri River here in Arkansas. Just hanging out for a couple days, so making some videos for you guys. Let's talk a little bit about the weather during my trip. Now, the weather was forecasted to be about a high of 55, which was right on the money during the day. At night, it was forecasted to be between 42 and 44 degrees. Well, that didn't exactly work out. This was very important because I was not using any traditional type sleeping bag or anything like that. I was using wool blankets for warmth only and no fire because I really didn't think I would need it. Well, the temperature actually got down to 34 or 35 degrees, which is quite a big difference. Thankfully, there was no precipitation and the winds were pretty light. Now, it was right behind my house, so maybe I didn't plan as well as normally I would and bring extra clothing, but I really did not bring enough clothes, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. The weather really was different than I was expecting. I was never in any danger, but it certainly wasn't comfortable. I also slept on a raised bed, which wasn't the most comfortable thing in the world. It wasn't too far up off the ground. There wasn't a lot of insulation underneath it. And the way I made my tarp, I didn't bring it all the way down to the ground. Again, we'll talk about those things a little bit later. This was the first time that I'd ever slept on a raised bed. And when I put it together and I put my foam pad on, and I thought, this isn't bad. This is gonna be just fine. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just fine. Next time I definitely need more insulation, either boughs, which are very difficult in a lot of places here in Louisiana. And like I said, I had no pines whatsoever, so I couldn't put any fluffy needles or anything underneath me. So next time if I do a bushcraft overnighter, I'm just gonna bring a sleeping pad. I ended up sleeping mainly on my back because I couldn't flip on my sides very well without hurting my hips, so lesson learned. In case anyone was wondering, Shannon does love Bobby forever. Now let's talk a little bit about gear performance. I had several new pieces of gear and a couple of older pieces of gear that I used again. First of all, I use my new 10x10 AquaQuest tarp. I have heard a lot of good things about AquaQuest tarps and I'm very, very pleased with it. The only problem is, is that it now smells like smoke terribly. Tie out points are excellent. I had no problems whatsoever. I've seen quite a few YouTubers, Joe Robinette and some other people use the AquaQuest tarps. They're really, really nice. They're a little bit heavier than some of the other ones, but I think that's because they're more durable. You can really feel the quality. I will also mention my tarp toggles. Now I made these particular ones out of carbon fiber. You can make them out of wood. I have an entire video, which I'll try to remember to link down below. And I never do that. I never remember. That's why I need one of these camera editing guys, like these YouTubers. They just say, we're going to put a link down below and it happens. I got to remember to do it. The toggles were awesome. They make it so much easier to put up a tarp. The wool blankets worked fine. They're pretty basic wool blankets. One of them is 100% wool. The other one is I think 30 or 40% wool. It's an imitation Swiss uh, army version wool blanket. So it works very, very well. This was also the first more detailed trip for my deep woods ruck from the Hidden Woodsman. This thing is awesome, guys. Malcolm only makes a few runs of these a year, so they're somewhat hard to find sometimes. You attach them to a classic Alice pack frame. I've done all that and it rides really, really well. I can't suggest it enough has tons of storage, it has two big pockets on the sides, which really allow you to carry all kinds of stuff. I could put my canteen cook kit in there, the canteen, other stuff, just stuff it full, all kinds of stuff. Like I said, it rode very well, very comfortably. It wasn't very heavy, I didn't put a lot of gear into it again, because it was pretty minimal gear, but very pleased so far with my deep woods run. I also used the first ax that I ever bought, which was a Wetterlings Les Stroud Bush Ax. They don't make it anymore, it is awesome. I love it very much, keeps an edge perfectly. I take good care of it, worked great. Last from the standpoint of gear, the old classic GNS Scandi from LT Wright. This was probably kind of the first nicer knife that I ever bought, and I absolutely love it. Holds an edge perfectly. I batoned with it. I did whatever I wanted. I was able to cut meat with it. Really, really nice. If you're looking for a high quality, relatively affordable knife, check out all of LT Wright's knives. They're made here in America, and I think I might be picking up a new one soon. Don't tell my wife. 
So last and more importantly, I think is lessons learned. This is why I make these videos. I think it's important for people to learn, not just from me, from other people online. I mean, I've learned almost everything that I know from watching people. So I just wanna pass along some of the things I learned, see if it helps you guys down the road. I planned for alternate weather. I planned for the forecast to be correct. And the forecast was incorrect. Now, like I said, I wasn't in any danger, but it was cold, it was uncomfortable. I really wouldn't want to do it again. What would I do differently? Well, first of all, I would build my shelter differently. I would bring the backside all the way down to the ground to stop some of that wind from coming through. The other thing I would do is probably build a fire closer so that I could keep it going through the night to warm me up. It was almost freezing, uh, 35 degrees to me is almost freezing. Again, I'm from Louisiana, so it's pretty cold. And I would definitely change things from the standpoint of my shelter. I think the wool blankets worked fine. I just needed to prepare myself better. I also needed a little bit more in the way of clothing. I really was not comfortable without a pillow, so I had to use my down jacket as a pillow, and that didn't allow me to wear it. So I just needed a little bit more clothing, and I think it would have worked a lot better. I also lucked out because I had my tinder bag. It was wet and I didn't realize exactly how wet everything was. I would have had a much harder time getting things together if I would have had to try to find dry tinder out there on my own. I had my own tinder bag and it just shows me collecting tinder when I go on trips, see some dry pine needles, some dry cypress needles, whatever it might be. Keeping those things in my tinder pouch and using them really paid off. I also really lucked out in that I had my firebox nano. I wanted a cup of coffee, but I didn't want to build a big old fire. So I'm always gonna remember to bring some type of smaller wood stove so that I can make a fire really fast with minimal effort and make sure I can have a cup of coffee because sometimes you just need a cup of coffee. Like I said, I also would build my shelter a little bit differently. We'll probably do a whole nother video on specifically what I'll do differently when I shelter down the road. So stay tuned for that. Big picture, I think you just don't lull yourself to sleep. I got there, I was all excited. It was sunny, it was comfortable. I got on the bed, it was comfortable. And I have to live with the reality that at two in the morning, it's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be warm and sunny. That bed is not gonna feel really, really good because I'm gonna have been on it for four or five hours. I just have to think ahead and think, okay, what's worst case scenario? This is probably gonna be a lot worse in the middle of the night. So I need to prepare for that and try to make sure that I'm as comfortable as I can be. Sleeping under wool blankets alone on a raised bed was a completely new experience for me. I'll tell y'all that if you've never done it, go out and try it, because it will change the way you look at sleeping bags. It will change the way you look at sleeping pads. You really start to appreciate them a whole lot more. Give it a try, I'll do it again. I'm not sure that I'll do it without the ability to make a more comfortable bed, because it really was a pretty uncomfortable night, but I'll do it again. But I'm gonna chalk it up to a lesson learned. I'm gonna tell you guys, if you're gonna try it, think a little bit more and make a more comfortable bed. So will I do it again? Absolutely, and I'll do it again soon. I'll do it with more comfort, I think, but the general idea of a minimal gear bushcraft night was a lot of fun. I enjoyed being around the fire. I enjoyed cooking dinner. I enjoyed just the process of putting things together. It was a lot of fun. Like I said during the video, to some extent, it's all about testing your limits. Now, I didn't test my limits to the point of danger, but I definitely tested my limits from the standpoint of comfort. I was not comfortable. I wanted to get up and I wanted to leave, but I just sucked it up. I slept, thankfully, which was nice. I got under those wool blankets. I doubled them up. I got as tight as I could. Thankfully, I had that foam pad underneath me, and it actually gave me a little bit of insulation. It kept any air from coming up from underneath, which kept me a lot warmer, thankfully. And in the end, even though it wasn't the most comfortable experience, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about being outside. I learned to appreciate the people that go out there and do this all the time because it is not easy. And if you think it is and you've never done it, give it a try. As always, guys, I appreciate you checking out the Paleo Hiker MD channel. If you haven't checked out the full overnight bushcraft video, I will remember to leave a link down below, so make sure you check it out. It was a lot of fun. I'm here in Arkansas, on the eastern side of Arkansas, in the Ozark Mountains, enjoying, so far, not as much rain as I expected, which is really nice. I'm gonna head about 45 minutes north to a different uh, state park and try to go out by the river, do a little bit of fishing, and do a little bit of hiking. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you leave a comment down below. Do me a favor, guys, if you do like it, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps spread things across YouTube. If you wanna make sure you don't miss any videos, hit that subscription button. And if you wanna be absolutely sure that my videos show up on your feed, hit that ding dong bell, and you'll be the first to know. I'm gonna go have some more fun, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD.